Now, joining me now for his reaction to the death of George Cardinal Pell is former senator and Sky News host Corey Bernardi. Corey, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Welcome to the show, and I'm sorry to be uh, talking to you under such unfortunate and sad circumstances, but I've got to ask you, first of all, what was your reaction this morning when you heard the news about Cardinal Pell? Well, James, thank you for the invitation. Congratulations on the work you've been doing on Sky. But I, I was having my morning coffee and I got a text message that um, George Cardinal Pell had passed away. And the very instant reaction was one of a selfishness, I have to say, which was sadness, because as part of the Catholic community, to lose a great man, and I mean, he was a, an enormous, influential figure within the Catholic community. He was someone I greatly admired. He not only had a, a fierce intellect, but he was steadfast and dogmatic about, about the importance of the eternal truths of the church. And no matter how he was challenged, he served as a beacon of light for people like me who said, no, I'm going to stand up for what I believe in, just as you said in your editorial. But I say that's a selfish reaction, and um, it's one that I'm sure is shared by many in the Catholic community today. But there's a bit of sweetness to this, because you have to remember that George Cardinal Pell spent his entire life trying to prepare people for the eternal life that comes after we've left this mortal coil. And when priests do die, then it is really a celebration of the masses uh, and their funerals are celebrations of what we hope and what we expect and we want for ourselves. And that is we do ascend into heaven and our souls are there forever in peace. That doesn't take away from the pain, but it, it does, and the loss that we have for ourselves. But I do sense that there is a joy that, that whatever burdens Cardinal Pell had uh, dealing with the, the awful charges and the incarceration uh, that in his later years, they've been relieved. And, and he, I have firmly believe, is now headed to a much better place. And I think he'll be as well received up there, quite frankly, as he has been amongst the Catholic laity, because he was an extraordinary man. And I, James, I had the great pleasure of dining with him, meeting him on a number of occasions, and they're indelibly printed in my memory because uh, he was just a considered gentleman of the true Christian piety. And I know how much that uh, it weighed heavily upon him, I think in many respects, the slings and arrows that were directed by the media. You mentioned some of them. And I've got to point out as well, James, before I throw it back to you, that it was Sky News. You know, it was Andrew Bolt who never left that corner of Cardinal Pell uh, throughout the whole thing when the world had basically declared him guilty. Uh, the ABC were piling on. People like Andrew Bolt, his great friend Tony Abbott and others were there always backing him in the corner. And um, I think that's a true mark of uh, respect for all of them. And I know it gave... George Cardinal Pell, great strength and comfort, as did the prayers of the laity. I know people that went outside of the church, outside of the prison where he was and just prayed for justice for days on end. And I'm glad that their prayers were heeded. Indeed, Corey, that's very well said. And I'll tell you, you know, I've been struck just on social media seeing how many people, not just of the Catholic faith, but other Christian denominations and other faiths all saying, you know, they mourn his passing because he was such, you know, a, a voice for reason, for faith, um, and for civilization even, too. Tony Abbott, you mentioned him before, he said that uh, one of the things that George Pell was was a committed defender of Catholic orthodoxy and a staunch advocate for the virtues of Western civilization. Now, I was saying before that I think this is one of the things that really got him into trouble. I mean, for progressives, if that's the right word for them, uh, you know, any of these sorts of things that represent tradition, represent faith, and represent a higher truth is, of course, a huge threat to their utopian schemes and dreams, which, of course, as we all know from history, always wind up uh, that every utopia winds up, as they say, you know, with a prison and a graveyard. But that said, is that, is that really what got him into trouble, that, that staunch defense of the Catholic Church uh, in, in particular and Western civilization and the, the inheritance that we all have as a result of that? James, you make a very good point in, in the sense that um, if you go back to 
the radical progressive movement, which you know started in the Frankfurt School, they recognised that in order to further the aims of communism, they had to dismantle the pillars and structures of Western civilization. Now, there is no more, I would argue, no more important uh, pillar than the church itself, the Catholic Church. And so, in order to undermine and, and erode at the chip away at the foundations of, of such an important institution, you have to target those who are steadfast defenders of it. And Cardinal George Pell was a, a, a unrepentant. He never, ever backtracked from defending the orthodoxies of the church. And that made him a target for the secular left, which we know most of them inhabit at the ABC, as they do um, in many sides of politics. And so he became a favourite whipping boy because for whatever sins were committed by individuals within the church, he sort of bore them upon himself in many respects because... He was a senior cleric here in Australia and the third most senior cleric anywhere in, in the world. But that's not to dismiss the fact, James, that he had his opponents within the church because, you know, there are a whole bunch of people who have done the wrong thing, whether financially or they've done uh, the wrong thing uh, through the priesthood within the church. That culture needed to change. Um, Cardinal Pell was absolutely determined to clean up some of the things that were there. He was entrusted with that by Pope Francis and Benedict certainly um, thought very, very highly of him. And that made him a lot of enemies within the church as well. Both of those things combine into a perfect storm where, you know, you can feed upon one and the other. The, the facts don't matter in any of these emotional sort of responses that come through. And unfortunately, as you pointed out, the uh, the, the court cases against him were held in Victoria where clearly the facts didn't matter that much either. And it's extraordinarily disappointing that people were prepared to, to just accept what was dished out until it got to the High Court where, as you made this very fine point, seven zip quashed his conviction. Mm -hmm. And still people were saying terrible things about Cardinal George Pell. He bore this with an equanimity that I think most of us would never have been able to bear. And I take comfort that his faith saw him through that. Um, just an extraordinary man, uh, James. And there is a great loss for many of us in the Catholic community and many of those who, of course, just respect people who stand up for what they believe in, which is a commodity in increasingly rare supply in this world of ours, James. Indeed, Corey Bernardi, thank you so much for your time and for joining us on this sad occasion. But as you say, also, in some ways, a joyous one. Um, that's all the time we've got for. Uh, but thanks so much, Corey, for that.